we speak, we good? Okay, so the, this is the question, right? If somebody has 50 students, and someone has 100 students, and somebody has 200 students, what's the difference? The difference comes down to marketing, right? So now, what happens when a student goes home and starts saying stuff like this? Sir, um, again, this is a simple basic. Some of you guys might be teaching this. Most of you aren't. When I bow, it shows respect. We all know that. How you bow shows self-respect. Now, that right there was profound to me because I didn't know that. So, do we want students to be disciplined or to have self-discipline? It's self-discipline. But we advertise discipline, control, respect. No, as a parent, we want the children to make better decisions when we're not around. To get them home safe. That's it. Come back home safe to me. So anything that we do is really for the purpose of helping that child or adult, that adult, that, that adult somebody else's child, just to get home safe. So how do you get from 25 students to 50 students to 100 students to 200 students to 400 students? Well, in the perfect world, every person who refers somebody that joins means you don't use student class. Well, that's not going to happen because it's not a perfect world. So let's use 80-20 rule. Let's use the 80-20 rule because for some reason, I just, when I figure it out, 80% of the people aren't going to do much in your school. But that 20%, so if you got 50 people, there's 10 people there that are your team. Am I wrong? Is it about 10 people that are like your hardcore ones? That they, they, because to me, the 20 percenters, these guys, they're the moving the shakers. They're the ones they can count on. But amongst those 20 percenters, they may not know that you need help. So when you told them, listen, if you know someone who could benefit from our school, please let them know because we want to help as many people as possible. The purpose of Marshall Arts School is to help people, period. So we're problem solvers. So the biggest problem that I find, you know, coming into the industry as a consultant, coming as a, as a school owner, coming from, from, from a parent, from a, com a competitor, from, from a, a, just a student, is that the leaders are tired. They need help. The leaders, regardless, when they have help, they're always outnumbered. <laughs> they are outnumbered. And, and, and when you're going through, you know, what's called life, ups and downs of life as a leader, no one comes to us usually and say, hey, how can I help you? Because what they do is that we condition them to tell us, can you help me? Can you help me? And we don't mind that because a lot of times when we're helping them, it's really helping us solve a problem that we had also. And then as a leader... Most of us are too proud, not too proud to beg, so to speak, but too proud to ask for help because I'm supposed to be whatever type of you use, I'm the leader. But the truth of the matter is that when you have other leaders speak in the network, a lot of solutions happen because you're dealing with the same situation. Every single person that you know has that child, and when you walk into that door, the whole freaking place changes. I call that Damien, you know, Satan's child. You know, and saying child sometimes is a cute little girl, sometimes is a, is a teenage boy. It's a person that just messes you up. And that person is the one that makes you the best instructor. So it's your inability to communicate with that person that makes it where it's a negative situation. So when you take that child, adult, or parent, sometimes Satan or Damien is a parent that walks to that door. I exercise them real quick. I take the devil out of them really fast because in this house here, that is not allowed. Now, they can go outside afterwards and continue with those patterns, but not here. Basically, what I told people is, if you begin with the end in mind, if you know your school's going to be a 200-student school, you got to know how many staff members you need to have that. Because it might be 150-student school that may make more sense. Based on your square feet, based on, I know people who have literally 600 students in one location. But that means they have a huge staff, too. Mm -hmm. Then I also know someone who has only 275 students, and he keeps it only at that, but the average price is $225 a month. Mm -hmm. But that's, And then he also has 75 students that only do after school, only 75. Because in New York State law, you can't have 76, otherwise you're daycare, and it changes the dynamics. So you have to know what the laws are in your area. You know, if you're going to pick up children for after school, you got to know that in some states you're not allowed to do it unless the car is an actual bus and the bus has a certain insurance and so on and so forth. So what? So understanding the, in the art of war. Right? Also, know too, also, too, to, there's a loophole in New Jersey that um, 
you can say you don't use the word after school. Mm -hmm. You just I mean after school like uh, program. You just say like an after school karate program. Right. You have to word it different. You know. You don't want to say like after school program. You know, like educational. You want to be more no. The like, thing is, you can't use the word care. Care. You but the state after, has got that's on. That's what it is. The care the, word. Right. The state has got on top of that. Their philosophy is that if you're if a child is in school. It, at your place for more than two hours is automatically considered care. Right, okay, right, okay. Right. So, so here we go. Literally, you have people with experience at different levels yeah. around. So if we were right now, five people talking and someone saying, I'm interested in looking into having an after-school care karate, well, by definition, you would have said to them, Mr. Consultant here in the network, I said, no, you can't use care. Can't and then, use care. And, slice okay, that off. Slice. <laughs> and, then, and then if we know the criteria says only two hours. See, I'm not an expert at any of those things in particular. Two but, classes. But collectively. So collectively, we actually have a lot of answers. So, so this is why the, you know, the Unified Martial Arts Network was something that I came up with 10 years ago. And what's interesting is that the gentleman holding the actual camera happens to be Randy Howard, right? That's okay. You can pick that up. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to. It's not like since you some money. Dude. All right, so, so again, my expertise is what I considered me. Marketing, merchandise, and events. When I teach a class, that's an event. I taught a class 45 minutes ago, and I'm going to teach you in 45 minutes, that's still an event. I'm doing multiple events in one day. And, each, and in each event, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. In the beginning, you greet people. Welcome to Fantasy Island. In the middle, you interact with them using three accessing cues, right? Visual. And you show them auditory, you explain to them kinesthetic, which means that you might have to physically put them in position. Then you got olfactory, as I mentioned before, which is the smell. The smell of your location is very important, right? Because the school, the, the smell and the taste are close to each other. So sometimes you smell something that makes you want to throw up. You don't want that to be your school. Just because we get used to smells does not mean that other people are going to be used to that smell. And that is part of memory. Your biggest or, 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 or the easiest way to remember something is by smell. There's people that you know that when you smell, you know his breath is going to stink. You don't want to be that person. You do not want to be the person because that person doesn't even realize they stink. I like to know them. Yo, you my man, homeboy, you need some gum. Everybody breath stink. Everybody's body odor, you know, at some point will smell because that's just us being human. But the point is that if you get into that habit of doing that, some people don't realize that. Like, I, you know, and, and I've told my friends, listen, you need some deodorant because I care about it. I'm not going to walk around with no one with a book out. They know these. I let them know, too, because when you really care. So I care about the martial arts. And sometimes I go to school and I say to people, listen, uh, you got to take care of the smell. And, 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 and people have gotten offended. And then afterwards, they told me, you know what, man, you was right. But I'll tell you the easiest way for your guys to really make sure that your school is at the highest level quality of aesthetics is speak to the women. The women will let you know the truth. They know if it smells good, if it smells bad, if it, and, and you can create any atmosphere that you want. You know, it's your school. You can create any atmosphere. You, you, you pointed out a school a few days ago that was in a big operation, but you loved the way it looked. It looked professional. It was nice and tight. Beautiful. Beautiful, Belvoir. Where was this at? But, uh, the one we spoke about. But the thing about it was that... Oh, you're talking about... Um, uh, yeah. That one, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, but, 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 the small one or the big one? No, it, it, it's, it's the small one. Yeah, it, it's a small location, but what he looked at was how professional it looked. Yeah. The paint job was tight. The Beautiful. floor was consistent. There was a theme... And, and, and is it something that's duplicatable? Absolutely. How do you duplicate it? Well, you took a photo. See, changing the colors is a matter of just making a decision. You know, you don't want to have blue, maybe you want to have red, whatever, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. This color right now is green, right? Green. Lime green is not a color that I particularly like. But you know what? I'm enjoying this uniform. This is the most popular one in recent days that people like. I'm like, wow, because green, lime green happens to be hot right now. In the future, it might be burgundy. <laughs> burgundy will come back eventually, you know? So, so understanding trends and following them. Mm -hmm. You take this top right here. If I made this top in the color scheme of your school, but it happens to be a baseball shirt, but we only made 24 of them, 
So now your school logo is on the baseball shirt during baseball season. Only two dozen, maybe three dozen, depending on the size of your school, because you don't want distressed merchandise. You don't want things laying there. So you can get some pre-orders from who? From those 20 percenters. Right? Those 20 percenters are the ones that always buy anything that you get. Mm -hmm. So you do the same thing during the football season. Or you can make, or you can use the color scheme of the most popular baseball, football, basketball team during that season with your school, with your corporate identity on it. It's merchandising, and people go to shop every quarter. Maybe you and I don't do it, but spring, summer, summer winter, and fall, people are in the mall. Your school has to have a mall. I believe that my location had to be able to pay its cut, so to speak. So I had a section that was my boutique. And in that boutique, it had to pay its rent. But I had to have stuff in that boutique for, in order for it to be able to help you know, pay the rent. And I never did too much of anything. I pre-sold the majority of the stuff. Guys, we're going to have these gloves that actually bend. And they're going to be in multiple colors. Black and white, white and black, black and red, blue and, black, blue and white. So it'll match the majority of the rec suits. So this is the same thing I'm doing. I didn't, create, I didn't create this. This is called, this is called a, a pre-sale. Apple is a master at it. Now, once you got the stuff, then you launch it. So this is the pre-launch mode. In about eight weeks, six to eight weeks, we're going to have all of this stuff. It might be less, but still, the idea is that you want to pre-sell whatever you have. We're going to do a seminar. God willing, on May 20th of this year, we're going to be doing a seminar. So today we put the flyer out. I go on to Facebook, we put on Instagram, Twitter, and whatever. And, and, and let's say tomorrow there's a new thing called Gooly Google, but we're going to use that Gooly Google platform too. Yeah, I don't give a who what platform we have to use. But if we keep it a secret, then your operation won't get bigger. So the reason why your school does not have more students is because it's been kept a secret. Mm -hmm. There are no secrets. So let's... So, so, so that's it. All right, guys, get out of here.